Hello and welcome to the Embodied Shakti Summit Astrology Reading for the Summit with Tree Child. Tree Child is on the phone with us. Um, she lives, Tree Child, you live out in the woods in Nova Scotia somewhere. Will you, will you say hi and, and tell us where exactly you live and why you're coming on on the phone and not on video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I live on the edge of cell reception, so I do live in the forest near a lake called Whale Lake, and not too far from the ocean in Mahone Bay, and my um, uh, area, I, I'm just lucky to be able to be on the phone, so you get to yeah. see the chart instead of my face today, because that's actually what's most important to focus on, okay. and I'm really glad to be here. Yes, I'm glad you're here too. And I've um, been working with Tree Child with my astrology for a couple of years now, and it's been tremendously helpful um, to get Tree Child look at my to look at my birth chart and all of the transits over the past couple of years. And I've started to ask her about dates. Uh, for events like the summit and you know and the transits and what's going on with my astrology in relation to that and so we're just going to get all astro geek on you today <laughs> so um, <laughs> we love talking about astrology together so um, we're going to try and break it down and be real simple in case uh, you know and, and simplify some things and clarify some things for beginners to astrology too so um, so hopefully uh, that will be helpful to you. So before we um, started recording, Tree Child was asking me about what this reading was for and, and what the summit was about. And so I wanted to answer that question here. So anyone who's listening who is still learning about the summit and hasn't signed up yet or is still wondering what it's all about can hear my answer too so this astrology reading is for the embodied shakti summit that begins on april 5th of 2019 and i had uh i had Child make a birth chart if you will a natal chart for the summit for that day um for here in california so as you might know, when you get your birth chart done, you give your birthplace as well. And so we we did my birthplace here in California, since that's where I am. And I'm the mother, if you will, of the summit. And so it's being born right here where I am. So, um, so the summit, the Embodied Shakti Summit, is a gathering of practitioners from all over the world uh, who I have interviewed about their embodied shakti practice now embodied shakti might mean th different things for different people for me the term shakti comes from my study of yoga and in sanskrit shakti means the uh, feminine life force divine energy that flows through us and it's a it's a creative energy and um and so all the people in the summit I interviewed, I think 35, possibly 36, including myself, I had someone else interview me, are, everyone is talking about what embodied Shakti means to them. And so they're coming from all different traditions from all over the world, all different spiritual lineages, and have translated the word Shakti into the terminology that, it, that, it, that they relate to the most. I have interviewed many yoga teachers however and other practitioners that use the word shakti to 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 refer to this and the whole embodied aspect of it is is referring to a shift in spiritual practices that is very prevalent these days as people are uh, reclaiming more feminine centered womb centered practices um, we're noticing that a lot of very masculine energetic practices are about um, the a movement of energy of spiritual energy that moves upward and outwards and so that often in its extreme translates into religious and spiritual traditions that point to getting to some state of being or some place 
heavenly place that is outside of and away from our human experience and often refers to the human experience and the earthly experience as dirty and bad and sinful and refers to sexuality as sinful and being born from a human womb as somehow tarnishing and sullying of of the soul and so as we're reclaiming feminine centered spirituality uh, we are re rediscovering and unearthing buried and suppressed practices that actually celebrate and honor and revere the process of being embodied as a human being through the womb of a woman and and that there are ancient practices that revered women and our ability to birth new life and so we're rediscovering and redeveloping practices that help us to come down and in and bring spirit and spirituality into and infuse our earthly human experience with spirituality and bring the soul and spirit completely in and therefore unifying heaven and earth these concepts of heaven and earth that earth can be a heavenly spiritual place and our experience here on earth can be that and so that's the the meaning of embodied shakti as a practice as a philosophy as a way of life so i hope that answers your question tree child and if you have any other questions um, feel free to let me know otherwise we can get started with the reading okay well i'm honored to be here um offering this bit of astrological perspective on the day of this workshop becoming and being born um an interesting thing and i'm not sure if you planned it this way but it's at the time of the new moon um both yeah, the moon and the sun that way. <laughs> yeah are conjunct in aries which is what happens once a month at the new moon is the sun um as going through the signs, the moon goes through the signs once a month, the sun goes through the signs, you know, once a year. So they come together once a month and that's when we can't see the moon because it's in its dark phase and the sun is literally, um, you know, overlapping the moon in a way that, that it doesn't shine light onto the moon because of the earth's um, perspective. And so the, the moon and the sun in Aries is at the beginning. It's, uh, Aries represents the new beginnings, um, the self, the birth, the I am, the coming into form. And it's a fire sign. It's um, action oriented. And with the moon um, conjuncting the sun there, it also brings the divine feminine together with the self. The sun represents our self. The moon represents the divine feminine, the intuitive, the emotional side of ourselves. Um, and with those coming together in Aries, it's a time to begin uh, delving into that, that feminine wisdom and the intuitive way of seeing things. And it's very interesting that they're in the house of community in the chart and that if you look at the chart there's more planets in the house of community than any other house oh in the entire goodness. chart so, so hold on i just i just wanna, that is, hold on one second tree child i just want to clarify that i'm pointing on the chart here with the cursor on the on the screen i've shared the screen with the chart for those viewing this video and i'm showing how this um this little piece of the pie here on this circular chart uh represents the house and it's the 11th house tree child you see the little number yep. 11 down here uh where i'm pointing the arrow now and we have no less than one, two, three, four, five planets in the 11th house, which is the house of community, um, including the sun and the moon, all there. And, and it's kind of, this house is kind of straddling the two um, Aries, which is this, looks like a, a, a little red 
bird flying, like when you used to draw little birds as a child, you know? <laughs> That's what yeah. Eric like. But it's really, what is it standing for? Isn't it standing for the, the ram or something? The horns? Yeah. yeah. And then it's, and it's straddling that and this other one, which is... Pisces. Pisces. On the cusp of that house with... Venus is just so close to the edge of that house. It may as well be in there as too. Venus is the planet of, you know, the heart, um, the female energy, um, love and connection and social connections. And Venus is right on the cusp of that house. So it's um, in Pisces. It's a place, again, of deepening the intuition into the feminine wisdom. And it's close enough to be conjunct with Neptune and Mercury, which are both in Pisces on that day. So there's this opportunity to communicate from the heart, to communicate from the depth of intuition, from that feminine wisdom that is being presented in this workshop. And then that also has um, uh, a sextile to the Pluto and the Saturn in the house of spiritual practice in Capricorn. So there's a support of the, the Saturn energy is where we create a container, we create a practice, we create a ceremony, um, we create boundaries around something. So this summit itself is this particular boundaries for this. And then Pluto is the great transformer. It's the one who sheds its snake skin, releases that which is no longer necessary. Um, it moves through the contract and the expansion of birth, that process. In a way, Pluto is, is um, giving us that, that uh, uh, ability to transform through that contraction and expansion and coming into new life, which we all have our various individual patterns that we need to release and those flex and bits and pieces of snakeskin that we're rubbing off as we move through our lives. And, and this course will allow you to come into harmony with the intuitive level and the communication and the heart to shed the past and renew and come into alignment with this container of, of the divine feminine. Um, there is an interesting um, square between the Saturn and Pluto and then that new moon and the sun. And so with Aries representing the divine masculine, there's a challenge going on where you're challenging yourself to let go of the, the aspects of you that have been perhaps aggressive or um, trying to attain things from a masculine um, dominated perspective um, so there's this uh, ability to to kind of uh, crumble those old uh, foundations that haven't served you in the process of um, attaining connection through the patriarchal way of thinking and allowing the uh, more feminine wisdom to guide you. And there's this uh, trine, which is the blue lines that you see between the new moon and the sun to Jupiter in the house of relationship in Sagittarius. So Jupiter's at home in Sagittarius. It's the teacher. It's the elder. It's the one who allows expansion to take place. Um, and it's, it's got the gift of um, like moving past the contraction into the expansion and into the birth, if you will. And with that, having that trying to the, the moon, it's, it's allowing that process to partner your um, community with yourself. So there's a partnership between um, community and um Self in this chart because the sun represents the I am, the self, and it's in the house of community, and then Jupiter's in that house of partnership. There's a partnering with something greater than self as well because Jupiter sees the bigger picture. 
Jupiter um, has the ability to expand into the entire universe. So you're letting go of that little um, tiny uh, sense of self that is separate from all this and growing into a more expanded sense of self through the work in this um, Shakti uh, summit. And also Jupiter has a trine to Uranus, which is at one degrees of Taurus. It just entered Taurus this month and will continue on into Taurus throughout the year and onwards. And so things that we have been thinking about that we may have um, been percolating are now being able to grasp it in the spirit um, place with that Uranus being in, in the 12th house of spirit connection and connected really nicely with that Jupiter in the house of partnership. Again, there's this partnership with spirit and there's emphasis on a profound um, ability to radically transform in a way that you shed those snake skins, you let of that past and you come out of it in a in a place that's new and different and may not even recognize your past self but you move forward from that place with with um, more flexibility and ease um it is interesting it underlines that um uh thing we were saying about the masculine principle is right in the um uh, first house in the chart and then Venus is in the house of soul purpose so the purpose of this workshop is to move towards Venus to move towards the feminine wisdom and the uh, limited sense of self with Mars in the first house the first house can be our ego our personality the part of us that expresses in the world um, and so it's uplifting that that um, kind of male dominated part of ourself, but in a playful way because Mars is in Gemini and Gemini has the ability to be light and easygoing and playful and, um, and to see two sides and also communicate. Um, so, uh, you're, you're bringing it to the, the sense of soul purpose and how to express your soul purpose through the divine feminine and some of that is about shedding the the masculine energy and expanding the sense of feminine intuition communication through the intuition through the um the means of tuning in dropping down into the form into um the knowing that that the form is simply a container for the formless and that through that container we have the ability to touch the source all it is the shakti presence and move into that um divine nature as it were you know um, child i just want to pop in here because i'm finding this to be quite interesting that we do have that um, mars masculine energy in Taurus, which in my feeling is one of the most grounded earthly signs. Uh, and so um, it's, like, it's actually, um, excuse me, but it's actually in Gemini. Oh, you said it, it, it was Gemini. on the it's uh, all Uranus. Uranus is in Taurus and, and, and Mars has just moved into Gemini. If gotcha. I made a mistake and said the wrong sign, no, no. that's possible. No, that's okay. Um, I, I was still in Taurus from when we were looking at Uranus. So that's my, <laughs> that's my mistake. Okay. But, but yeah. it's very close to Taurus. I mean, it's. Yeah, kind of it just left the sign of Taurus. Uh -huh. And um, so it's moving into the lighter sign of Gemini. So I think it's allowing uh, all of us to see the the duality that Gemini holds, it's the twins of the masculine and feminine principles and make choices from that place. What do you choose today? There are days when we need to choose to do the masculine thing, like pay the bills. And then there's days where we choose to 
um, plant the seeds or do something creative. And so I think with this um, square between Mars and Venus, we get the opportunity through the summit to make those choices and to look into our deepest place of intuition to find the um, the, the direction that we need to go in each and every moment. And it's interesting that Mars has a sextile to Chiron, which is the wounded healer. So here's this opportunity to delve into the places where we have been wounded because of this dichotomy of the the sexes and 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 work towards a place of um letting go of those wounds, healing those wounds, and supporting one another in moving into um, practices that support us and sustain us in really feeling our worthwhileness, feeling our self-worth, our, our self-care, and valuing that. Um, and, and a lot um, that, that sextile of, of energies with Chiron is um, offering us the opportunity to take it one step further and be there for others as the one who holds space. When I have gone through a deep cleansing and a wound in my life, a challenging passage, then I'm comfortable with the pain of that particular challenge because I've healed that pain. And then I can sit with you in your pain while you move through something similar and that supports you. So the summit grows from that place of community and communion and being able to support one another in these passages. And there may be something that you've moved through that I haven't yet moved through yet on my path. And you sit and hold space for me while I move through that. And in this way, community evolves. Mm -hmm. And it's this evolutionary process that we're in right now that is um, taking us to a higher level of understanding. And one of the other interesting things that's fascinating about these dates is that the um, north and south nodes, which you may or may not be familiar with, um, they're not actually planets. They're um, related to the aspects of the moon. And the north node is in Cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. And the moon, of course, is the, the mother, the divine feminine energy. And, and so the north node is the direction we're headed, where we're going to receive our most fulfillment, the purpose that's being fulfilled right now in planetary evolution is the divine feminine okay. and the south can you can you uh tell explain to me how to find the north node on the chart here okay it's in the third house it looks like a little upside down u with curly cues on the oh, end because in the chart it's called the true node but that's the north yeah node. okay yeah the the true node um is another name for it basically the north node and the true node is um it's related to all these calculations mathematical calculations that relate to the moon and in astrology we found it to be like the the guiding force in a life so being this is the life of this particular summit the guiding force is towards communication because it's in the house of communication and um, cancer which is the sign that's ruled by the moon it has the depths of water energy in it has the flow of intuition it has the divine mother and um, so you're going towards that and then like this is happening on a planetary scale the south node is being conjuncted by Saturn and Pluto. I can't even say when that might have happened in the past, but it's been a grand long time. Can you, so, can you explain how to find the south node on the chart? It's not represented on the chart. It just happens to be the opposite point from the north node. So oh, if you okay. look at 
where Saturn and Pluto is and put your pointer on them in yeah. Capricorn. That's then right that, across from there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So April, I've been wondering with grand curiosity, what is going to happen in April of 2019 because of this particular conjunction being very powerful and also supported um, in a big way by, you know, Uranus going into Taurus, that things that work things that we were comfortable with in the past are no longer comfortable and with Saturn it's like they're feeling like constrictions and limitations and with Pluto there it's like the phoenix is burning its way through and we're rising from the ashes of what has been and what has been you know from one perspective could be the patriarchy um, from one perspective, it could be the environmental um, devastation that we've wrought on the planet as humans. Um, and from another perspective, it's each and every one of us, our personal journey of pain and trial and tribulation um, moving towards transformation. And these planets being in the house of um, both travel and spiritual practice, um, but in the house ruled by Capricorn, it's it's not so likely to be about travel as it is to be about travel in the internet world, right? Um, you get to stay put in your one place on the earth and go places via the World Wide Web and release these limiting factors from the past. and it's really an important time to be having this kind of support that you're getting in the summit so that you're not alone with the change that's coming from these um, particular times that we're living in. And there's no one that's not going to be impacted by this. It's impacting each and every one of us in a different way. Um, and with the square to the new moon, um, there's like, uh, the, the new moon in Aries is saying, shake up, wake up, you've got to change. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> and, and sometimes change comes with the support of community, which the summit looks like it's going to be incredibly supportive community for everyone involved. Um, and sometimes change happens when we're on our own. And it's so much easier to go through these changes when we have a spiritual community to support us. Um, and that may be um, on the ground in person communities as well, and that you let the partnership um, develop with, with Jupiter in this um, house of relationship with this particular community and communicate within the community. The more you can communicate, the more you can intuit and share your intuitions and your particular healing gifts within this community, the more benefit you're going to receive from it and the more it's going to be allowed to expand you and guide you towards your fullness of purpose. And the fact that it's been chosen for this time um, that kind of rules that communication is a big theme, community communication in this particular chart with the North Node falling in the house of communication. It's always going to be in Cancer, which is the, the sign of home and the moon and the mothering energy. But it's not always going to have that aspect of communication and community that this particular chart has. Um, do you want to ask some questions at this point, Sama? Yeah, I, I don't remember if you said much about, um, uh, we talked about Chiron in the same house, in the 11th house, and we talked about the sun and the moon in the 11th house, but there's two other planets besides Venus being on the cusp there that I don't know that we talked about, and this, um, and um. the this red line that's going between those two planets and uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius. I'm, I would love to hear more about that as well. 
Okay, so that's Neptune and Mercury, and that's where the communication theme is really strong. Um, and I believe I did mention that earlier, but I can talk some more about that because Mercury is the planet of communication. It's also the mind. And with it so close to Neptune, um, it's like our mind is merging with spirit so that we can get direct messages from spirit. And then with it, again, so close to Venus, it's like messages from our heart and from our feminine wisdom self are coming through very powerfully during this time that this workshop is beginning. And this sets the theme for the whole workshop, just as your birth chart sets the theme for your whole life. And that line to Jupiter, it's um, challenging you to partner with community, challenging you to step up, to take your place, to communicate from the heart, from your intuition, from divine feminine nature from the connection with source and and Jupiter expands the more you give to the process of communication the more it expands yourself and your sense of connection with the lunar energy and that that new moon energy and it's just like I don't know, a couple minutes after the actual new moon. So the moon is starting to grow when you begin this workshop. So that's actually really beneficial for the growth and the development of everything that's going to happen during the workshop. And then again, I believe I talked about the Mercury and Neptune have that nice sextile with the Pluto and Saturn. So if you do get stuck, Go to the communication, whatever form of communication works best for you. It might be writing, journaling, free form writing is going to be really beneficial during this time with the Neptune and Mercury together because Neptune is that, that kind of a form, uh, a formist, that's not quite the right word, um, the, the formless, the ability to go out side of the form or the structure it's not like um writing for a list you know it's writing just from that place of spirit in yourself to either you know release or get guidance or transform and grow and to to share from that place that that place that i'm sharing from as i do an astrology reading these little things i've learned this language of these little glyphs on this page and then they plug into my intuition and i speak from my intuition that's a very mercury and neptune connected um, way of speaking and I'm sure that a lot of the people in the summit will be speaking not so much from a speech that they wrote, but more from the energy of the summit itself calling forth voice from each and every one of us who give our our thoughts and our, our voice to the summit. It's going to bring forth exactly what you need to hear, and you're going to take that one step further and heal yourself from the words that you digest as they come into you from this particular forum. Mm -hmm. And and the, and it feels really significant to me that um, Venus is right there involved in all of that because that's been my intention with the summit is to evoke that divine feminine voice from all of the speakers. Absolutely and encourage people who are listening to also listen to their own divine feminine voice and begin to communicate that to give that voice and it's often a voice that's been um suppressed or not allowed to be spoken and it feels like this particular time and we can see why here on this chart where everything is gathered around and bringing this all of these communication and community um, influences together with that um, 
that tight weaving in together with the divine feminine with Venus there. And, and can you say something about Venus being on the cusp between the 11th house and the 10th house? What, what, is that bringing in any kind of influence from the 10th house with Venus? Well, what I said earlier about that is that it's the sole purpose of this summit to activate that Venus energy or that divine Shakti energy, the, the, the feminine um, aspect of um, creation. And, and Venus is the heart, it's love, it's the female, it's, it's um, the sole purpose is the 10th house. Um, in traditional astrology, it was called the house of career. I find sole purpose to be a description of it. So it's like really plugging you in as a participant into your sole purpose. How do you serve the divine feminine? But it's also serving the whole of the summit to go towards that direction. That's the purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we also look to the moon, which has that feminine wisdom energy and being conjunct the sun there's another way that it's like expressing that purpose and that being in the house of community brings together both of those things, like the purpose that's for a greater good of the whole, like the entire planet, when we're plugged into our soul purpose, serves the earth, it serves the evolution of humanity. When we're plugged into doing our personal work like you said we've been held back by the masculine principle for so long you know there's this opportunity with the square between venus and mars to break through that and to go rushing into the the feminine you know with support from the transformational quality that you get with pluto the healer and and um that pluto just helping us let go of the past on the south node and any limitations to Saturn uh, so that we can go towards that that feminine wisdom of, of cancer ruled by the moon in the north node and that that sums it up pretty good yeah so could you okay so I have a few more questions um so the uh Venus and Mercury and Neptune are all in Pisces and then we have yes. the sun and the moon and Chiron all in Aries. Now, in my feeling about it, Aries is one of the more masculine signs. Isn't it related to Mars? Absolutely. Mars usually? Yeah. Mars, Mars rules Aries. And so it's like shining the light on that, but also the dark of the moon is there. So... Mm -hmm. You've got this empty cup of the new moon, and you've got the sunlight shining on that so that you can fill the cup with the feminine. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then and, we're right there. And then with, Chi yeah, with Chiron there as well, you, you, it's like in order to expand into our feminine, we have to go through the contraction of how we've held back from our feminine. So the Chiron helps us through the contractions. We help each other through those contractions so that we can expand into the feminine and the, the Shakti principle. Mm -hmm. And then Pisces, in my feeling, is one of the more feminine signs, very watery, very intuitive. And here we have Venus and Mercury and Neptune these very, I, I feel like Mercury is also tends to be a very masculine, mental, you know, intellectual, technological kind of a, of a planet. And then Neptune tends to be a very airy spirituality, often very technical too, but right there conjunct, uh, right there uh, with Venus in Pisces, it's just sort of seems to be bathing all of that those energies in the feminine flow of Pisces. I'd love to hear more of your reflections on that. Um, I guess I didn't label Mercury as um, masculine personally uh -huh. um, or Neptune. Um, 
Mercury, while it does rule the mind, it's really um, our authenticity, our um, ability to communicate from that base authentic self. And, and with Neptune there, um, any kind of meditation or visualization or um, stepping into a place of spiritual connection is going to be the guiding force for the communication so that the communication is flowing from, yeah, I think of Pisces as somewhat feminine because of how flowy it is. It's a mutable water sign and it is really devoted to, um, you know, the intuition and spirit as, as is like we, 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 we may put spirit into a box in, you know, Sagittarius, where we have like kind of religions, but with Pisces, spirit is just spirit is the spirit, you know, whether it's called Shakti or whether it's called um, the creator or, you know, a particular um, goddess name from another culture lineage, it doesn't matter to Pisces or Neptune because Neptune and Pisces are about formless. They're the great unknown. They're the all that is. There's nothing, and so it's bringing that um, into the ability to to flow into the divine feminine and to communicate that. And as we do that, we kind of shed the snakeskins of whatever's held us back from being our fullness of our feminine wisdom selves. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, we just had a pause there, so I'm going to share the chart again just to recap. So, um, so beautiful what you've shared, uh, Tree Child. So, if I were to recap what I've absorbed from this reading, um to to help people who are considering signing up for the summit have signed up are getting ready to participate in the summit and are you know through going through the process of participating even the guest speakers that this is promises to be a very potent time of personal and collective transformation through communication. Now, we knew this already. I had a tree child look at the astrology of this time when I was planning the summit, and I intuitively picked April 5th as the starting date. And I remember, uh, tree child, you, you wrote me back or you sent me a little voice clip saying, oh my gosh, listing all of the reasons why this was the perfect time for this type of summit. So, uh, so we kind of knew, and, and we're just taking a closer, more detailed look at how how these the planetary influences are very supportive of the intentions and the sole purpose of this summit. And I think it's so beautiful that there's Venus in the, in the house of sole purpose and all these communication and healing influences um coming in and and lending support to that and so it sounds like from what you were sharing that people participating at this time can um really benefit from exploring communication around these spiritual transformation processes so listening of course to the interviews and then possibly even participating in some of the live aspects of the summit which will have um some possibly some live question and answer times where you can ask questions of the guest speakers yourself and hear their responses i'm also planning on doing a uh, writing from the womb open mic poetry reading or wow. writing uh, re sharing circle, maybe more than one, where um, participants in the summit can can 
look at my, you know, can get some input from my writing from the womb e-course. It's a free course I have in the womb centered healing um, temple. And, 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 and then of course that's not required. If you have a writing from the womb or a, an intuitive writing practice already, then you can come to that live circle that will be announced soon as part of the summit and share your writings uh, with other members of the community so we can come together in community to support uh, letting this feminine voice be heard and shared and nourished by uh, you know this validation that we all have when you know i find it very validating for me personally to be uh conducting these interviews with other people who are just as passionate about this feminine empowerment um process as i am I, I don't often get to just go on and on like i like to about this in normal conversation with people in my community. <laughs> it gets a little old to, for people there goes sama again talking about the womb right whereas everyone that we interviewed 35 uh, uh, 36 actually because one was a couple man and woman and so all of these people we could have just gone on and on together and really nourish that longing to communicate this this aspect that's 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 really sort of sprouting up and bursting up within us right now with these um planetary influences that are that are coming forth this spring and for this particular new moon i just feel like we're all building up to this real birthing of this um this aspect of our individual soul purposes as the the, the purpose of this time is is flowing through us and so i'd love to hear any overall any last overarching overall um reflections uh, or suggestions you might have uh, for how people can further support themselves because you know sharing this kind of you know coming onto a live call and asking a question even or sharing a, a piece of writing that you've done that's in this this feminine from this feminine intuitive place can can be a bit scary for people especially since it's been so violently suppressed that voice for so long and so my, my you know my uh perhaps there's something in in the chart that can, that people can draw upon to support us through that um through that potential I'm not sure i want to share what i'm my reflections are you know so another way to share is to share in the facebook group for the summit your writings there and, and making posts but i know a lot of people can be hesitant to share that and so i'm wondering if there's any reflections from the chart that can support people to go ahead and be courageous and share um, that feminine communication um what i'm focusing on to end with is the moon and the sun conjunction trining jupiter which also trines uh uranus and Jupiter is the expanded process. So it's allowing you, which is the sun, yourself, to tune in to the divine feminine, the moon, the lunar energy, um, and go into that place of the depths, come into partnership with it, Jupiter in the house of partnership, and then take that back to spirit and radically transform and release and let go of anything that holds you back from your divine partnership with your Shakti experience, with whatever your particular experience of the divine feminine is. So it really is about bringing you into partnership with that womb-centric, beautiful, feminine energy of creativity, birth, and um bringing forth life ah beautiful thank you so much tree child for um sharing all of your astrological insights and i'll be posting this part in the womb centered healing temple facebook group as well as you know the recordings to this um 
to this astrology reading. And I'll also be posting information about Tree Child in case you want to reach out to her for your own personal astrology reading. And you might have a special deal for, for Summit participants, Tree Child? Yep, absolutely. All right, so we'll put, post more information about Tree Child's um, astrology services. I, I highly recommend um, her work. I've been working with Tree Child for quite some time, and it really helps me to understand the energies that are flowing and, you know, why I might be feeling any, any particular way and how to um, optimize my my own energies by understanding what's happening on a on a larger scale with the planets and the movements of, in the universe so thank you so much for your wisdom and all of this tree child and um, that's all for now may we all receive this wisdom uh, to our highest benefit